it's great having the fans back, but in the NBA, there are pros and cons. And, and there's this fine line that we've seen. There's passion, and then there's inappropriate behavior. In New York, we compliment the New York fans. We say, oh, that's the best fan base. They show up even when they lose. They're going crazy. They celebrated the other night. Sounded like, looked like they'd won a championship. And then you have somebody spit on Trey Young. Somebody in the second row spits on Trey Young. I get it if you want to yell and scream, make noise, but you spit on Trey Young. Like, how do you get to the point where you go, I'm going to spit on that guy? It's the Knicks and the Hawks. <laughs> The Knicks rightly banned him. I don't even know what that means. It just sounds like wet, uh, window dressing. What are they going to do? Put up a picture at the garden? If, if you see this fan, spit on him. Is he going to put a hat on and glasses and he's going to be back in? We saw a fan in Philadelphia drop popcorn on Russell Westbrook. 76ers revoked that fan season tickets. Jazz had to ban a couple of fans. They were heckling Ja Morant's family. You know, it's a reminder, really, of the proximity of the fans in basketball. Because NBA players, they're exposed. They're not wearing pads, helmet. There's no fence. They hear everything. You can reach out and touch them. It's exciting, but it's scary. And people pay good money for the right to boo the opponent, sit in those seats. And I have no problem with that. But there's a basic level of respect that everyone deserves. And hopefully NBA fans... Stick to it throughout the rest of the postseason. And please don't use the excuse, well, you know, the pandemic. Okay. The pandemic probably led to what happened at the PGA Championship with Phil Mickelson. People at Kiowa Island were out having beers, sunshine, great moment, wanted to share in it. I understand that. I didn't like the fact that they were enveloping Phil and also Brooks Kepka and their caddies. Scary. But nothing happened. The Knicks, after the win, the fans were celebrating. That, to me, felt like the pandemic was officially over in New York. But the other stuff, I mean, don't tell me in Utah, the pandemic led me to yell at John ja Morant's family. This idiot in Philadelphia is trying to say, I spilled my popcorn on Russell Westbrook. Yeah, great. What's the guy? Uh, I'm, I'm sure the guy who spit on uh Trey Young was probably like, I, I'm yelling at him and just spit came out. The proximity, but don't, don't you know, use the pandemic as an excuse. Yes, Eden. You know, it became a punchline um, when Giselle Bunchton was like, he can't throw the ball and catch it at the same time. But she was being harassed by the other team's fans. She was cornered in waiting for an elevator and... You know, she had no choice but to sort of yell back, I guess. I mean, she could have not yelled back, but she did in that moment because she was cornered in by a real jerk yeah. who was heckling her, yeah. you know? it's Yeah, yeah, Paul. I think that also there's there's like levels. I think LeBron was talking yesterday saying, we're used to swearing, we're used to booing, we're used to you suck. He goes, but once you start throwing objects, and then, look, popcorn's pretty bad. That's pretty bad. Anytime you spill something on someone or dump someone on something, Spitting to me is as bad as it gets. Yeah. That would be where if if Tra you know Trey Young decided not to press charges, if he and he's being the bigger man here, but if he said, you know what, yeah, let's press charges, let's send a little message, I would have no problem with that. Spitting's really next level. Yeah, I mean to me, well, he he said he's not going to bring charges, but just the fact that you would you would get to the point you would spit on somebody. I mean, you want to flip somebody off? Okay, okay, I get it of sorts. I don't like it, but I, I, I understand it. But golly, I mean, this is, a, this is a young man. I mean, he's a kid, and you're spitting on him. And you're spitting on him because he's good. Because he he hurts your team. He, he He's, man, it, it just, but I, I don't want to hear excuses like the pandemic and people getting out for the first time, and they got to, you know, they got all this pent up energy in it. But you're not, are you spitting on anybody else in the pandemic? Like you go to work and you're mad at somebody and you spit on them? You're going to pour popcorn on somebody? You're going to make fun of somebody's family? 
No, you're not going to do that. But in sports, hey, I can say this and they can't do anything. What are you going to do? Come up here? One day, somebody's going to do it again, just like Ron Artest. And we're going to blame it on the players. Oh, they're out of control. You had fans in the palace who came on the floor wanting to exchange punches. You can love your team. How about you just watch and enjoy a game? Be passionate. Don't be criminal. All right, what else do you have, McLovin? So we were workshopping a fan poll over here. Mm. Question about fan behavior. Is this the same as it's always been, you know, a few bad apples? Is it better than the old days? Um, and maybe just more pay, more attention paid to it? Or is it worse than ever? I think there's more attention. Social media has really taken this to another level. Because there are fans that feel like, hey, did you see me last night on SportsCenter? Hey, I'm the guy who spilled the popcorn. I remember Seton telling me a story that he had a friend who was a diehard Yankee fan. Ran onto the field. Knocked down a security guard. Did it another time. Made it on the back page of the New York Post. Yeah, Seton. And when I was uh, 19 years old or 20, he was an absolute hero. It was like the coolest thing that ever happened. He was banned from Yankee Stadium for life. Went to a bunch of games after that. I don't know that it ever really did anything. But, yeah, it was like at the time, it was like, oh, my God, did you see so-and-so? He got the attention he wanted. He probably carried the uh, the newspaper around with him. Oh, yeah, of course. He had that back page in his back <laughs> pocket folded out. Check it out. Look at this. Yeah. Rudy Giuliani saying, like, we got you. You know, oh, my gosh. There was a quote from Rudy Giuliani, who was, I guess, the mayor at the time. Because he's a big Yankee fan. And and he was so proud that they got this guy. The guy wasn't even a streaker. <laughs> no. He just ran onto the field. Now he's a big dude, though. He, big dude. He's like 6'7". <laughs> and 6'7", like, and when he was 13, he was just always massive. Yeah, yeah, Paulie. Remember that uh, the two, what I think it was White Sox fans who attacked Tom Gamboa, the, the first father and son. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you with your dad, you got yeah, good times. Well, my dad's dead, or yeah. we would try to do that. Oh, that'd been great. Yeah, I think it was he was Tom Gamboa was the first base yeah. coach of the Royals. Yeah, that was two thousand two. Nothing's changed. It just happens. Every it pops up every once in a while. Things happen, but now social media just pumps it out there where everyone could see it. They were showing like a PGA tournament from the fifties, and uh, I can't remember who won. Let's say it was uh, Sam Snead or some old golfer. And as soon as he makes it, forty fans yeah. run onto the, the green and start reaching for the ball and run off with it. There was zero security whatsoever. Yeah, McLevin. Yeah, I actually think it's better, believe it or not. Because like the bat, I was looking up the battery incident with the Eagles. They would throw batteries at players, and they don't do that anymore. They're not great. Don't get me wrong. But like back in the '90s, the Eagles fans would get violent, and it was looked pretty scary. Yeah, I don't know if you ever covered it in the vet, but it looks terrible. Uh, I did go to the vet, but you know, any any stadium that has a jail. In the stadium? No, they don't. Yeah, yes. I thought that was like a joke. No, I, the, no, I, the, the vet had a jail. I know for a fact, uh, based on the story that you were just telling earlier, that Yankee Stadium has a jail underneath it too. Oh, uh, all right. Like a holding cell. Yeah, yeah. But I, I think the vet has like a full like uh, you know facility with like thirty pet. Like they're everyone goes to jail there. It's but. a it's a satellite uh, Rikers Island, you know. <laughs> you know but I like, think the new stadium. They are in the link now. Like, I think all that behavior has been hmm. kind of lessened. I mean, you were there a few years ago. Maybe you saw some stuff. I, I understand passion, but I don't understand stupidity. That somebody gets to that point where you're going to do. Imagine this father and son. Hey, uh, Jimmy, you want to go to the game? Yeah, Dad. Hey, I got great seats right down the first baseline. That'll be great, Dad. At what point do you say, hey, you want to beat the crap out of the first base coach? <laughs> yeah, dad, that sounds like a great bonding moment. Come on, let's go. So the father and son are pounding on the first base coach. Yeah. Yeah, Paul. Can you imagine like getting in trouble and going down to the Philadelphia Eagles like stadium prison? You walk in, all the, the cons are there. You're like, what are you in for running on the field? What are you in for running on the field? What are you in for running on the field? Uh, through batteries. Yeah. What are you in for? 
Uh, I punched another fan. Yeah. I mean, you had you had punches thrown with the Astros and the Dodgers fans the other night. Uh, that was ugly. Yes. That was real ugly. There was a moment where a fan walks over to another fan. It might have been at a Padre game. It, it just sucker punches him. I went to a Royals A's game in Oakland. And I was with my friend, and we didn't have great seats. We were up high. At one point, I look, and two guys are rolling down the, the steps. By choice? They're, no, they're fighting each oh. other. They're rolling down the steps. And then there's just punches that are thrown, and we're just sitting there. I'm sipping on my beer, and I go, how do you think that started? Like, at what point do you go, would you say? No, would you say? And then, all of a sudden, like, you go to a sporting event, and you get that angry. I'm going to guess alcohol plays a little bit of a role here. Just <laughs> a little bit of a role here. Yes, McLeod. What do you think of people who wear the opposing jersey in so-called hostile I, territories? I, I have told my son, I have told him, do not wear the jersey. He's a Packer fan. I said, if you're going to go to another stadium, don't wear the jersey. Don't do it. And, you know, he's a Red Sox fan. He wanted to go to Yankee State. I said, don't wear it. All it takes is one guy who, who you know, you get sucker punched. And, you know, he's like, well, but I should be able to wear. I said, will you just listen to me? Do not wear your team's jersey. Well, what about a hat? Can I wear? Don't wear anything. Well, I'm going to be cheering when the Packers do. I said, okay, but just all it takes is somebody sees you out Side the stadium, in the parking lot, leaving the stadium, and then somebody gets frisky and, and you know, the tough guy and they have beer muscles. Yeah, see. And I went to Jets Dolphins a few years ago and it uh some and it was in New York, is that Met Life? And here come two dudes while you can actually hear it before you see it. So I, I turned around to look like what the commotion was, and it, here comes two dudes in their dolphins jerseys walking down, and there's stuff being thrown on them, yeah. and then sure enough. They're walking back up. There's beers getting dumped on them, thrown at them, all this awful stuff being said. And it's like, dude, chill out. Yeah. There are certain stadiums that I would not go to unless I, I actually had to work the game. I would never go there just for enjoyment. It just and, wouldn't. And then not only to, like, to go there for enjoyment, but you have to pay a fortune to get in yeah. to then listen to all that crap. It's like, forget it. Yeah, Paul. We're in another team's jersey. I, I went to a, a May Yankee game, long time ago, April Yankee game. It was really chilly. I was in the outfield. It was the Mariners and Griffey were in town. It's my first ever Yankee game. And this dude came. He's probably like a 30-year-old dude, 25-year-old dude. He's sitting there with a Griffey jersey on, and he's just buying. I don't know if he's by himself. Oh, oh, and the fans started chanting, lose the jersey. And, and it felt kind of fun at first, the Yankees fans. And then two big dudes went up and said, hey, man, you can't sit out here with this Griffey jersey on. And they told me either to leave. I was watching. They said, leave or take it off. And they were not joking. It wasn't like cute. Mm. And the guy took it off, wrapped it in a ball, sat on it, and froze his tail off for the next nine innings. And I was like, wow, that's that's a little over the top. 